In week two of 2009, Ohio football picked up something it didn't get in 2008. The Bobcats are hoping that a heroic overtime victory can lead them to where they want to go. And where they're going now is back to Peden Stadium for week three of the season and home game number two against an FCS nationally ranked program. Hi everybody, I'm Russ Eisenstein and welcome to Bobcat TV's preview of Ohio and FCS 12th ranked Cal Poly. In 2008, the Bobcats were in nail biters all the way through the early part of the season. Week one at Wyoming, week two at Ohio State, week three against Central Michigan, and week four against Northwestern. The deal about that was they didn't get a victory and thus had to play catch up throughout the rest of the year. Ohio is hoping the momentum from a thrilling 31-30 overtime win at North Texas can propel them on to great things. Schools from the back and schools from now around the rest of the country certainly know the ability of 1AA programs. Last week, Ball State lost to New Hampshire. Earlier on this year, William & Barry vaulted past Virginia and Richmond roughed up Duke. There are lots of examples and the most famous one of them all is Appalachian State over Michigan a couple of years ago. Cal Poly is 1-0 after a win over Sacramento State last week. Last year, they opened up the season with a win over San Diego State, and they should have won over Wisconsin. They took the Badgers to overtime and lost by one, 36-35. It's 2,458 miles from San Luis Obispo, California to Athens, Ohio. The Mustangs lost to Weber State in last year's 1AA playoffs. Their first year in FCS was in 1994. Rich Ellerson took the program to new heights in his eight-year tenure. He left to go to Army. And Army's old offensive coordinator, Tim Walsh, is a new head man at Poly. Cal Davis, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Southern Utah are the other schools that make up the Great West. The Mustangs have a tradition of great defensive players. The Buchanan Award is given to the top defensive player in 1AA. A Mustang won it three years in a row. This year, senior linebacker Carlton Gillespie leads the unit. He's the Great West's D player of the week. Senior safety David Fullerton picked off his eighth career pass in helping to limit Sac State to just 288 yards last week. Scheme-wise, the Mustangs have shifted from the 3-4 to the 4-3. No one was better offensively in 1AA last year than Cal Poly. They did lose one of the best quarterbacks they've ever had in Jonathan Daly and wide receiver Ramses Barden, a tall, sleek wide receiver drafted in the third round by the Giants. Utah transfer Tony Smith gets a start under center this year. They run the triple option, but they do throw out of it. UCLA transfer Dominique Johnson is the best of the receiving core. Smith was a leading rusher in week one, and slot back John Hall figures to see a lot of work against Ohio. Cal Poly since 1980 is 4-18 against Division I competition. Ohio in that time is 13-5, but remember a lot of those meetings were against Marshall in the 1980s when the Thundering Herd was still in 1AA. Our coverage on the Citizens Bank Ohio ISP Sports Network starts high atop Peden Stadium at 6 o'clock. For the kick at 7, Rob Cornelius, Caleb Troop, and I paint the picture for you. There are tickets still available. It's youth night. Ages 3 to 18 get in for $5. Call 800-575-CATS or visit OhioBobcats.com. It's Ohio and Cal Poly, and that's the preview. For Deron's Daniels and Evan Shaw, I'm Russ Eisenstein, and this is Bobcat TV.